Dear friends, welcome to the Eastern Front channel. Today we will dive into the memories of the killed Lieutenant Gerhard Link. This is the third part of his diary which was captured on the battlefield. Links for the other part will be at the end of this video. In this video I will show on the Google map the advance and retreat of the German army in accordance with the diary of the murdered lieutenant. We will trace his path near Moscow to his last destination where he found eternal rest. In his diary, he willingly shared his thoughts about why there was such a difficult situation near Moscow. Perhaps it is the memories of Lieutenant Link that will shed light on the reasons for the defeat of the Germans near Moscow in the winter of 1941. Well, let's get down to Lieutenant Link's diary. December 8, 1941. Japan declared war on England and the United States, thus, it is finally on the Axis side. It is still difficult to judge the significance of what is happening. I still think that this will be the beginning of open hostilities between Germany and America. The first actions of the Japanese seem to be successful. Since noon, disturbing enemy fire on the village Kazmino, the telephone connection is out of order again. At 17 o'clock, out of breath, a messenger comes running, he brings the news of the death of Oberleutnant Mage, the adjutant of the regiment commander. A shell directly hit the house where the battalion headquarters was located, killed several people from the headquarters. The 3rd Battalion is unlucky, I am required to go to the front line, and at the same time, take the new commander of the 3rd Battalion, Oberleutnant Wolf, 187th Artillery Division. Everyone is there waiting for an enemy attack, as soon as this assumption is made, the attack begins. I'm running through the village and notice bullets flying between my knees, tracer bullets fly across the sky like red sparks, I don't feel cold anymore. An hour passed and the fire fight in the forest ended, it's done. There are only a few Russians left on the main line of defense who need to be smoked out of there. Returning back, I found out about the renewed attack, again, I am taking the ammunition urgently needed there to the front line. The Russians on the one hand broke into the village, several houses are burning. The remnants of the 2nd Battalion do not let the enemy to the edge, which is east of the village. I see the Russians through the wavering flames, the situation is uncertain. The 3rd Battalion is stuck somewhere, on the way back, I pick up the wounded in the truck. It is not an easy task to take pain-worn soldiers away from the battlefield, meanwhile, midnight had arrived. It works beneficially for several hours, I can hear all the conversations through my drowsiness. December 9, 1941. At 1 hour and 30 minutes, together with Lieutenant Varnstein, I'm going to the front line again, we found the 3rd Battalion still in the village. They cut off a part of the village in the hands of the enemy, units of the 187th Infantry and 187th Artillery Regiments sent to the rescue, are preparing a counterattack. I'm coming back with a report, and can finally rest for a few hours. The situation is restored again, the 2nd Battalion is no longer combat ready a reconnaissance detachment and separate battalion companies remain on the front line. The enemy's renewed attempts to attack us during the day and the following night were repulsed. December 10, 1941. I'm going to Boriskovo to prepare a new command post, the withdrawal of the battalion goes unnoticed at night. The rear units remain near the enemy, sappers blow up tanks and anti-aircraft guns. December 11, 1941. All units are busy building a new position, there is no material, there is not enough trench tool. It's a pity to see how hard people work without tools in the frozen ground. There is no need to think about the delivery of much needed equipment in the near future. The rear units withdraw according to the order and set fire to the abandoned villages, the flame of the fire illuminates the night sky. At 15 o'clock we listened attentively to the Führer's speech in the German Reichstag, we were pleased to learn about the declaration of war to the United States. We've been waiting for this, our naval forces will be able to respond to Roosevelt's brazen challenge. December 12, 1941. The construction of positions, despite all the difficulties, is moving forward, the enemy has not yet approached. His guard is at Svitovo, at the right 7th Army Corps, the enemy managed to break through threateningly deep into the rear. The bitter cold was replaced by wet weather, the consequences of this are icy conditions. December 13, 1941. A sad celebration, the burial of the fallen comrades at Kazmino took place. In the evening, the regimental headquarters moved to a dugout equipped for him. 
The small stove is filled to overflowing with firewood and is ablaze, but still does not warm the frozen walls in any way. December 14, 1941. Everything is covered with frost, the sun shines brightly in the crystals of snow. We are concerned about the enemy attacking the neighboring regiment on the left almost all day. The enemy broke through to our rear, but they could not destroy it, the threat has grown. A new retreat is assumed, for this purpose, the evening of December 15th is scheduled. There is no need to think about the Christmas fast. Separate enemy units should be located at Obarkovo, on the road along which the delivery takes place. Ordered to leave positions tomorrow morning, it's all very bitter. It cost us untold labor to dig the ground without the necessary tools for this, we literally dug it with our nails. Our shabby room is ready, at the same time, the last construction materials were spent, the sappers no longer have a single nail, not a single end of the wire. And so we have to give up, leave to the mercy of fate the land that we have conquered in our victorious movement forward. Oh my god! What have we been guilty of, that this has fallen to our lot? Our situation is critical, there is a danger of being cut off, we need to retreat. 20 hours is the shortest time, we must hurry, we can have another bowl of rice soup. It's good that everything is already prepared, we go all night long. We may have to withdraw with battles, internally, we are ready for this. The situation is unknown, most of the telephone wires are cut and the connection does not work, did the enemy cut them? There is still an intermediate station in Sorokino, a slippery road makes you suffer. With difficulty, we descended by car from a steep slope, the assault guns will no longer rise, one of them was blown up, nothing is known about the fate of the second one. Meetings with retreating regiments create the first traffic jams, we have to go around the road. With great difficulties we break through with the column. In the village of Rakovo we stopped, the further path must first be explored. In a crowded room, sitting on a chair, I doze for one hour, Lieutenant Strobel is lying under me. When the flame in the small stove goes out, it gets cold, and we freeze, the room has bad, damp air. December 15, 1941. As soon as it starts to get light, we continue on our way, bad roads and snow create a lot of difficulties. Cars often get stuck in the snow, slowly moving forward. The vehicles of the regiment's headquarters are dragging with difficulty, one of them should be taken in tow up to the place of rest village Zagari. I arrived there around noon, to the south, not far away, the noise of battle was heard. With an appetite, I destroy several pieces of stale bread, you don't have to think about sleep, I'm staying at the telephone, which has not been removed here yet. Danger of being surrounded, it seems, is no longer there, a long column of all kinds of vehicles and soldiers continues its way in the dark. It's not easy to take patience with you, I want to go ahead with the carts, but the highway is filled with cars. I haven't had time to get out of this inferno yet, as the cart turns over again into a snow-covered pit. While we are trying to get her out, the column passes, it is impossible to overtake it. The truck, put in order yesterday morning, deteriorated again, the axle broke, nothing can be done. The last parts of the regiment pass by, I have to leave the car, we're loading three crates of hand grenades into the cockpit. Everything that cannot be taken we destroyed, it should not fall into the hands of the Bolsheviks. Several guns of the 1st Division of the 187th Artillery Regiment remain on the road, exhausted horses can no longer pull carts and freeze. The anti-tank company lost several guns and baggage wagons, some cars had to be abandoned due to lack of fuel. At the turn, a heavily loaded cart turns over once more and delays our way, as soon as we are about to set off again, a platoon of heavy infantry guns catches up with us. Poor people, they spent so much effort to save these tools, on the last steep slope, the gun falls into a deep hole, it can no longer be saved, we blow it up. At 9 pm in the village of Denisica we get into a terrible mess, my regiment is long gone. What joyless pictures appear before my eyes, boxes of ammunition, boxes of shells are lying here and there on the road, I'm going further there are already mountains of ammunitions. I also find items of equipment, all these things belong to someone else, not my regiment. We leave behind all these unwisely abandoned things, again we are forced to join one column, it's stalled. Neither back nor forth, a few kilometers away from us is a difficult section of the road. The cold penetrates everywhere, I try to protect myself with a blanket and two overcoats, but my feet are stiff from the cold. 
It's blowing hard, the snow covers all around. December 16, 1941. The front column is moving slowly, the traffic jam ahead has already been resolved, and we are moving relatively well. What amazing pictures stand before us, I think I have seen this only in the campaign to the west during the retreat of the French troops. Broken cars, scattered cartridges, in many cases, they hurried to reset, it is very bad that we do not have enough hidden storage rooms in which we could hide at least the most valuable. Morale and discipline suffered heavy blows during this retreat, how much valuable property has been wasted, they didn't even bother to destroy it all. We can be afraid that these munitions will fall on our heads, with small obstacles, I get safely to the regiment. We passed through Vyshenki village, the former location of the regiment's headquarters, then, of course, no one thought that we would see this village again. Although the situation was not good then, in that autumn slush, now it has become even worse, the numerous losses suffered during this time weakened our troop even more. Meanwhile, we received 200 reinforcements, which we somehow managed to get in the rear units. The combat capability of these soldiers is terrible, many do not even own their own rifle, I thought, that such a thing was possible only in hastily assembled Russian brigades. At the Pesiknoi Potpourino crossing, we rested only once for several hours, we have to move on tonight. Our goal is Tashino, also well known from the offensive period, we have to stand there for the next few days, covering the movement. I pass through Ruza, abandoned, almost completely deserted, wooden houses are burning in some places. These torches illuminate the city, it's as bright as day, we're moving into Colonel Raid's old apartment. At night the order comes prepare for defense, finally, the Fuhrer's authoritative word, it is impossible to retreat further, keep the Russian line of defense to the last. The city of Ruza itself should be turned into a springboard. December 17, 1941. The defense organization immediately identified a number of difficult tasks, every now and then, losses in ammunition and equipment are revealed. The last battery of Captain Rake was left in Ruza, the city is overflowing with wagons and units of every division imaginable. These groups break up and disperse every now and then, the clueless management of some parts only makes you shrug your shoulders. These divisions should be given an example of the leadership of the retreat in my regiment. Incredible pictures are presented, completely degraded figures wander everywhere in an undignified form, like tramps, like the last bastard. I interfere every time I meet such a loose guy, for the most part, they are short-term soldiers, without thorough drill. In the 267th Division, it even came to a bloody brawl. The new line of defense runs through our section of forest, on this side of the river. This line is undoubtedly better than it was in Kesmino, but worse than in Boriskovo. The plot is very wide for us. Dear friends, that's all for today, it was Tim and the Eastern Front Channel. If you like this video please support it with like and write your opinion about the reasons why Germans were defeated near Moscow.